here. Warm welcome to my craft room and to the LDRS Creative new release. Now this is a little late because I wasn't well, but the colors on these hybrid minis are amazing and you get eight new colors which I will post on my blog. They are fantastic to, uh, as far as mini inks are concerned. They're juicy, they're vibrant, and they're hybrid inks. And people ask me all the time, what's a hybrid ink? Well, it's in between a dye ink, which dries quickly, and to the other end of the spectrum, a pigment ink, which rests on top of your paper, waiting for you to emboss. It takes a while to dry. So this gives you the best of both worlds, the hybrid inks. You will love them. Now I slowed this down to show you the new release because it is so crazy beautiful. Love in Bloom is a flower set for those that don't like to color as much because you can do the three-stage stamping or two-stage, whatever stage it's showing. Then you have the beautiful blooms, which truly are beautiful. And this is for the person that loves to color. And they're gorgeous. They really are. For envelopes, so many possibilities. Yes, that was my daughter-in-law coming in, calling me. <laughs> she heard that. Here's the hanging out stamp set, which I am using today. It's gorgeous. And the Eyelet Lace Rectangle Die Set I'm using as well. I love the fact that it has the tag in there that matches the outer edge. Uh, it's kind of like a picture frame. Really nice. And this is the Taste Only Resistance. I love it. I'm doing my second project using more of this. It's the Build-A-Card Garden Escape Set. Beautiful. And wait till you see what I do with that one. Yeah. <laughs> It's coming up next after this tutorial. And then the cloud number nine. Is that not sweet? And uh, for any occasions that you want to send a loving memento out to, that is the set to do it in. And it's actually quite large. It's beautiful. Then we're going to move on to LDRS Creative 6x6 paper packs. I can't say enough. They're thick. They're gorgeous, colorful, and for Christmas, I love, I'm going to get to my Christmas cards too. I know it's just a few weeks away, but I am going to get at it and get some cards made because just looking at this paper makes me want to make Christmas cards. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make 5 by 7 Christmas cards, so I need to be creative with the 6 by 6 creative Aldera's Creative Paper. So there you have it. And then we're going to jump into some coloring. There's many styles of coloring out there, many products, many mediums to use. And I chose to stamp this. This is just so sweet. I love looking at it. It's so cute. And it's the hanging out. They're just hanging out. And I chose to do first no line coloring. I think, uh, the second one I'll jump in is the Copic coloring we're all familiar with, but no line coloring for some reason, it tends to shy people away uh, from coloring for some reason. I That's how I feel anyway, and I think no line coloring is the easiest coloring if you grab a few concepts when you're going about it. Now, I like doing no line coloring with pencils, your Prisma pencils, Crayola pencils. I'll be using the Polychromos today, but any type of uh, pencil crayons is wonderful. You know, if it puts color down, I think it's terrific. So you're going to double stamp. I put it on my Fiskar stamp press. I did it dark at the top for my Copic coloring, and then I stamped off so that I had a light gray image. You need to see your image. <laughs> Let me point that out first. No line coloring doesn't mean you just have no lines there. <laughs> you have to see your lines. There it is, polka doodle hanging out. So nice. And I am going to match the uh, actual image that comes colored in the front of the stamp set. So I am going to do as close as I can. There's my 120 set of polychromos. I don't use them enough. I think I've used them a few times. But you know what? You, 
it's hard to go through all of your stash, isn't it, and use them on a regular basis, you know, switch, you like to switch out. So I'm going to put these on the side and then we're going to delve in and I'm going to chat. Here they are. Aren't they gorgeous? Love it. And when I start my coloring, I have an electric pencil sharpener that stops. It stops when it's done making a nice point on the pencil. I have it next to me on my left hand side so it can always keep my pencil sharp. Now, there's times when you don't need to have your pencil sharp and I'm going to share that with you as I'm coloring here. So as you can see, with no line coloring, you don't want to make too many straight lines. Now, when you're doing animals, it really does save you because you can get away with, you know, the the lines as far as putting them in. And here I like to locate the different colors and Sometimes I will actually circle where I want to have my sweet spot, that lighter section. I'm not too worried about um, where the light is coming from on this. I just, uh, most times I just go with it. I, I know that there has to be, it's generally direct sunlight hitting right on you. That way you just have to worry about the centers of all your objects. And I thought it would be kind of nice just to slow it down here, even though I have it sped up a tiny bit, but not that fast, and show you what I do when I am doing the light coming from the center. I will go around the objects um, with, I'd say, a mid-tone, a medium tone. And I will watch for the places that I want to have the sweet spots. Now, I'm going to use a stump, so I want to take the color off the stump that I'm using here because I use these stumps. I have about 25 and I'm seriously use them every time I color. I love Gamsol. Gamsol is my favorite. I don't like the uh, baby oil because it's too oily and my hands slide through it and I don't want to go through that. I like the fact it evaporates and it spreads even with polychromos. And polychromos isn't a wax crayon, which is really uh, unusual that Gamsol will move the color because Prisma is a wax-based pencil crayon, but polychromo is not. But you can see here, it moves it enough to give me a lighter shade. So I will have a light, a dark, and a mid-tone. And then if I want to go back and push it out, I can do so with the Gamsol or add a darker color. You know, to make that light sweet spot show up, you don't want to leave it white. You just darken up your grays. And, and really, that is the key. It's keep it light and then go back with your dark and then move it out with the Gamsol. I want to show here that it, the elephant has a trunk. So I will go around and make the lines in it that are already there, that the artist already put in the image. And that helps us out when we're coloring. And I've already put the pink spots that are actually on the packaging. I am directly looking at the packaging and doing the coloring. That is easy peasy because it takes away a lot of your you know, thinking, your creative thinking on what colors you should use because you're literally just copying the package to the best of our abilities. So here I'll go over, put his face in, and you can always go back. Let me encourage you when I say that. Uh, don't get discouraged. I get discouraged, so I know we all can get discouraged when we're doing no line coloring. Because we're thinking, okay, what am I doing here? I'm putting lines in, and it's supposed to be no line coloring. But I'll tell you the secret to no line coloring is keeping it light. And that's why I did the Copic coloring. I want to show you the difference of no line coloring. Even though you put the lines in there, you have to have distinctive lines when you're coloring. Even if you're painting, whatever medium you choose to use, you need to have distinctive lines that set this elephant apart from an alligator, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> that mouse from the owl. You have to have lines there. But what it is, is you're going to blend into your lines to make it look like it is no line coloring. But you still have to have that distinction between one animal from another. 
And another little secret is go around and color lightly over the individual animals or the tree here, for instance. Just do it lightly first. You need to separate them. Separate the animals with a light line and that way you know what colors you have to color because in between the elephant there and the fox you have a few flowers and leaves. So, you know, just kind of look at your project and remember the choices of your colors, keep them light. And if you have an issue with no line coloring, if you keep the coloring light, it really does look like you know how to do no line coloring. I am no expert at coloring. What I am is somebody that loves to color. And uh, I don't do it enough to get the practice in, but when I start coloring, my mind goes through, okay, what can I do here? What can I do there? And I keep it light because you can always go over light, but you can't take away dark to make it light that easily. So that you can see what I'm doing here. I leave my sweet spot. I push the color out with my Gamsol, with the stump. And I just take those places that I want to have lightened up. And you can see how I'm doing it here. But you can actually change the color. So even though you put a dark color down, and maybe you went over that sweet spot with a dark color, don't worry about it. Make the outside edges a little darker and it will look like a sweet spot. And actually, this has pink in it, this little fox. And then I like to take this cream colored pencil in any set, and I will brighten up a color with a brighter colored pencil, you know? You can even use a white pencil and brighten up those places where, oh no, you know, I think I uh, did this way too dark. So grab a white or a cream colored pencil, go over it, and then you can push it out and start over again. And let me remind you, I am looking at the packaging as I'm doing this, so I'm not veering out too much. I may add a little bit more sweet spots that I like to have, but that's just about it. And when I do no line coloring, I think of pastels. I think of light pastels, kind of like uh, sherbet, you know? Have all the colors look like different colors sherbet. And uh, it does give this appearance of you just coloring, you know, pencil drawing, uh, drawing and coloring it in. And then on the smaller objects, I like to make it vivid because the animals don't have to be vivid in a sense if it's no line coloring. You want it to look like, you know, you don't have that hard pressed edge. But on the tiny little flowers, they're tiny, so you want them to stand out. So take your pencil, sharpen it nice and sharp, and go in there and just darken up and crisp all the tiny objects, and it'll be great. And not only when you do that, you are pushing out that beautiful light-colored image that we call no-line coloring. And... Uh, I can't wait till you see the difference between a, the same image done with Copic colors as with this no line coloring. And just because it says no lines, you need to put very veritable lines in there because a tree isn't one solid color. So you are going to have to put some lines in there. Another little thing is don't be afraid to experiment, you know? Um, not too many people, when people receive a card with a painting or coloring like this, I don't critique other people's work in that way. If I get a card, I'm just so thankful I got a card that I'm not going through. Now, if I see something that looks very unique, yes, I will critique it and look at it because I want to copy it. I want to be inspired to copy it, you know, but uh, don't be harsh on yourself really just sit down and have some fun. And that's what I did here. I wasn't feeling very well when uh, I started this project. Then I got uh, a little bit, you know, feeling better. So I thought, this is what I'm going to do. I, it's nice. It's relaxing. I can cough my head off and nobody's going to hear me. <laughs> just my husband. And uh, have some fun. So uh, on this owl, animals have fur. So no line coloring, you need to have some lines in there. Just keep them light. I'm adding some purples here. 
I find that purple is nice to be a background color for either browns or grays, especially the grays. And if you're doing black hair, you know, to have that uh, purple raven color as far as being the undertone color, it's great, you know. And I just walked up a flight of stairs. <laughs> so, <laughs> my grandson said, Nanny, I'm going to build you a lift to go up on the side of the house. Like, you know, the movie Up? Well, you're going to have that, but I'm going to do it in blue, okay? <laughs> That's Hunter. And they're fantastic, Hunter. Build your Nana lift for the stairs, but you're going to have to build three of them because I have three flights. <laughs> oh, you just think I went out and ran 50 miles, wouldn't you? And I walked up one flight of stairs. But anyway, let's get back to our no line coloring. Now, when I talk about making dark lines, you're saying to yourself, well, Carol, if it's no line coloring, don't you have to have it look like there's actually no lines? Well, in concept, I suppose that would be great, but you need to have some dimension to animals, you know, and so you're going to have to add some lines. So what I do is, if I'm doing dark lines, add, take your dark and move it down to your mid-tone and then go light. So, uh, or you could do your mid-tone like a medium color and then darken it towards the center so that the outside isn't as dark as what you put on the uh, inside of the image. Yeah, I hope that makes any sense. And this is just from my coloring experiences. You know, I don't think, I think it's great if you can go to school and major in art and get all of the, you know, um, why we do it and the reasoning behind everything. But, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. And for me now, <laughs> I did all my back to school stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, just color. That's what I say, just color. And then as you're practicing your color and you're watching, you know, people on YouTube that do this no line coloring very well, you'll grab some hints and some inspiration for yourself. Here I'm just adding some light, light blues. I end up putting a blue and a green together and I think I add a little bit of turquoise in there but I am keeping my pencil as you can see very light even in my hand it is a light edge because you know normally I like to give it a real hard you know I um, what do you call it like I like to uh, put pressure that's the word Carol spit it out there's the green pressure on it but then as I started sharpening my pencil to a really sharpened point, I learned to let up because, you know, I don't feel like buying six sets of polychromo crayons because I keep breaking the point off. So it's easier to learn to let up on your hand and keep your one set of pencils. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here we go. I'm going in with the mold. You can see with that little mouse how that mouth makes such a difference, doesn't it? And then you can leave the white areas where you want to leave it white. A smaller object, you can leave just white. But the larger, you want to add just a tiny bit of color. Now, here's the thing. This is what we're going to do. I am going to do a cattywampus card today. There, This is something I don't generally do because my eye tends to want everything to flow in proper perspective. Everything should be even, you know, um, straight. That's the word, straight. I have to take these. I bought a new pair of cutters. I really like these. I got them at Michael's and I had to pay a little bit extra because they're thin and they're short. They get in there. They're nice and short. They're not the long bulky cutters. I'll try and uh, leave the link if I didn't keep the packaging, but I'll do my best to find out what they were. And you can see I'm in my house coat. <laughs> yeah, it was, I started getting chilly. It was late at night. I did a lot of uh, uh, creating at night. And I thought, you know what? It's a house coat. What can I tell you? You see arms of a house coat. I couldn't help it. I was sick. <laughs> yeah, I felt, I, I figured, you know what? It's better to get the tutorial done in my house coat than not to get it done right. 
Now I put this in here just because it's so stinking pretty. Look at that. I should say it's crazy pretty. I don't like to use the word stinking when my grandkids are around. But uh, it slips out now and again. So anywho, yeah, isn't that pretty to have the pink with the polka dots? So I wanted a tag. This is the story of my tag. I cut it out and my desk, oh, you can see at the top right where the Copic coloring, see the difference between the no line and the Copic up there? Uh, it's like night and day, it really is. And I think you're gonna enjoy uh, both, coloring both styles on this image. Animals are really nice to color. So here I did the tag and it has these little flowers that come out. So I wanted to keep that in there. So I cut the background, I, I cut a white one. Now I want the black to stand out. So I cut it in half, moved it out on the tag you can see here. Yes, see what I mean with straight? Everything need to be straight. Well, I thought, you know what, Carol, you're gonna do a Caddy Wonka's card in everything. Even with the ribbons and everything else, everything is going to be um, on an angle. Yes. So here I just took a runner and uh, took the little hole guts out. I placed one on one side. Come on, get it on there. And one on the other. And wait till you see what I do with this. I cut this tape up. Uh, I cut that uh, background, that pink. I did it in silver. I did it in silver and I kept the little flower guts and I put them in a cup. And wait till you see all the little ideas you can get by just saving the little gut pieces of your project out of your dies. It's, it's awesome, marvelous. Now for choosing a little bit of background, just a hair of color. I chose to go with the color of the fox, you know, in the salmon color with the light sherbet salmon as far as the background here just to make that pop a little bit because we are going to have some deep colors in the card like I said the card is eight seven by eight inches when I'm finished and here you go this is where my mind went cattywampus I thought Carrie you have to do something different you cannot have everything perfectly squared off and I just yeah I had the heart for it, so I went for it, and here we go. Now this was straight, obviously, but uh, I decided to take my Copic on this. Yes, even though I just added a hint of this salmon color in the background of the blue so that it would stand out. I take my Tim Holtz um, Distress little tool there. You can use the end of your scissors, which I really like. If you want a really good distressed edge, use sharp scissors. That way you can go buy new scissors because they're obviously going to get wrecked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weigh the options, people. Weigh the options. Do you want a distress tool to buy a new one or a pair of scissors? Yeah. And this is the thin. <clears throat> Dury strips that I use. Excuse me, I don't want to go on to a coffee binge there, so I can't finish my tutorial. Boy, this flu was a doozer. Oh, I'm not even going to go there, but I appreciated your prayers, I'll tell you that. Well, I wanted to lift this up. Let's go with this. I lifted it up. I put tape behind the white to hold the gut pieces there, and there's a reason for that. <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me, here it goes. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my voice will cut in and out. And then I wanted to put uh, sentiment and I used the sentiment, let me get it here because I'm sitting right at my desk. And it is from the Love and Bloom, Love You Bunches. That's what I put on there. I just, I don't know, it just went with the animals, Love You Bunches. <clears throat> I actually thought that this would go really nice for a shower card. You know, with the little baby animals and love you bunches and all of that sweet stuff. And here from the one project that I did for the wedding card, I kept this. I told you I would use it. It's the golden pink and I kept it inside the coffee filter and I didn't put my static powder on there. May I stress that it's essential you put a baking powder, uh, what baby powder, uh, whatever be before you put your 
uh, burst the marker, clear mark down, because it does make a difference. You're going to get these straggling edges because there's, you know, you're you're handling it with your fingers and the oils get on there and yada yada. Now I have to spend nine hours and sixty-two thousand minutes getting all the strays off there. When if I just went over it with the powder before I stamped it, would have saved me time. But who cares, right? That's what we're up here for. I was going to say to waste time, but <laughs> that's not true. I'll tell you what, crafting is an art, but it's work. You know, it's relaxing work and it's fun work. You know, it's better than going to the coal mines, but uh, <clears throat> it does take a little bit of brain work to put cards together. And I, uh, I respect all card makers, artists of all realms. I respect you and I want to say that now. And I respect those that put tutorials up because that's work as well, people. And I do it because I love it. So, <clears throat> yeah. Here's where I add the gray for the... I tried to add a little bit of color for the... Um, that are in the background of these gorgeous, gorgeous animals. May I say that LDRS created the polka doodles. Uh, any image from LDRS is top notch okay you when you stamp that down you are going to get every line on there they are top notch stamps and uh, i can't stress that enough now here i go this is where i thought carol forget the straight okay you already put that beautiful polka dot paper straight on the dark gray now let's go with some cattywankas i hope that's the way you say it i say crooked so whatever, you know, you want to say is fine. And here I want to put an edge again. You know me in thickness. Oh, yeah. In thickness or in health, as I tell my husband. So I gained a few pounds. I remember saying that I, you would love me in thickness and in health. <laughs> I guess that's just a personal joke. I don't know. I, th I found it funny. That's what I told him. So, you know, yeah. After this many years of marriage, you're not going to stay, uh, you know, 100 pounds. Hello. Unless I never ate from the time I was 18 till I was, uh, oh, look at Caddy Wonkis. Oh, yeah. This was, <laughs> let's go with that one. <laughs> Cover half the image up, Carol. <laughs> so here we go. Let's build the edge. Now, seven by eight, I wanted to have uh, three gussets, okay? So when we get to the scoring tool, I'll show you what I mean by a gusset. Because the inside is going to have some depth to it, so I need to add some um, creases so that when the card folds, I have room. Look at this. And I wanted to show you this. I know the tutorials are long. I know that. But some of my people are telling me, my people, listen to that. Some of my wonderful friend subscribers are saying, keep them long. I like your long tutorials. I had to stop the edit and have my coughing fit right there. So it's over with. Yes. So here's where I decide the I needed to have the uh, bends in it. So you want to, excuse me, I'm showing them. Oh, he does it every time. I wanted to go across it three times on your scoreboard. So make three creases. Boom, boom, boom. It's a um, quarter inch. It ends up a quarter inch with three score marks. So that way, when you put it on the edge, which I go over it with the bone folder so the double-sided tape will stick, and uh, there you have it. And then I'm going to distress all around the edges. And this way it gives me a quarter of an inch lift on the inside of the card to do some uh, three-dimensional building on the inside. Now I took my black cardstock and we're going to use, I am just going to do the outside and the inside of this card. I'm going to keep the two sides white. Can you believe it? Now, if I didn't, if they got dirt on them, it would have been a three-sided card or if both white spots it would have been a four-sided card that's how I determine it sometimes if I get a mess on it well we know we're going to do another let me go there love the ATG gun I finally I'll tell you what I finally went back to the ATG gun even though it's big and bulky I love it you know it just and caddy won't guess and um yeah I'm trying to decide here 
I put some silver behind that. How many layers, Carol, can you put on that? Oh, at least 10. <laughs> Build it up. You've got a quarter of an inch on the inside of your card, and that's where I'm putting it. And then while you're gluing it down, uh, plant a flower, you know? Doesn't that look beautiful? I'm looking at snow coming down, so planting a the flower there was marvelous. Yes. Then I want to get all the glue. I want to make sure that I pat it down hard because there's a lot of layers. You don't want it to lift. You know, always be thinking that the person that gets this card would uh, like it if it was all intact when they receive it, right? And here we go with the ATG. It's just fun for me to put this thing. My half-inch ATG, I haven't put the half-inch tape inside it yet. So I have two quarter-inch ATG guns going here. Uh, I just grab whatever one. And then if it runs out, look at me. Ooh, and I'm doing it right over top. Some of my friends say to me, Carol, you're working right over top of your project. It doesn't bother me because if I mess it up, I just put something over it. It, it really doesn't bother me. Uh, the white bothers me, but as far as working on my... Look at Shove that stuff over, Carol, just so that people don't see how messy your island is. Oh, yeah, but that was good. I could see everything. You need that. I didn't want to jump up 50 times to go get pro products, so I just kept the mess all around me, and it's comforting. It's like your house coat. It's comforting. Your stash is a comfort to be all around you, you know? You bought it, so why not look at it, right? Then you have to put it back into their houses because I don't want to look at it all over the place all the time. <laughs> so here's the silver piece of paper. I cut that gorgeous die. So many projects can be used for this die. Like think about cutting. It has another die to cut the innards out and then putting um, beautiful objects behind it. Oh, it's beautiful. And the silver, see those little flower edges around there? I kept the guts of the silver. And then you'll see why as the project continues. Now, I am using my Gemini again. I tell you what, I love this Gemini. And I had to put this down and get used to using it because I'm so used to the Vagabond and the Big Shot Plus over there that I do, this machine is out of this world for cutting a billion, pro, you know, dies at one time. And LDRS dies are Teflon coated. Let me repeat, Teflon coated. So your papers come right out. And when they're out, and even the, see this intricate tree, it just be careful. But one run, run pa one pass. Yes, one pass through, and you are getting a clean, sharp cut. The one thing I want to stress about the Gemini is when you put your dies on there, make sure that the die cut side is facing up. Yes, and why do I say that? Because, look at that tree, isn't that gorgeous? I put one of my images with it down and it went right into the magnetic uh, piece, you know, and it's flimsy. It's the magnetic rubbery thingy and I took the paper off and said, oh, isn't that great? I lost that piece. Where? How could I lose that? No, I didn't lose it. I cut into my magnet plate, that one right there. See that? I put that facing down. It was hysterical. I'm looking for the piece. Why didn't it cut that piece? Oh, it cut all right. It just cut into my magnet. I'm going to have to buy like three of each of these, um, you know, the magnetic thing and then the embossing mat. I already wrecked that because I did the same thing. So I have to purchase a couple of more of each of them so that I don't panic when I do it because I have another one close at hand. <laughs> I always do something. There you go. Cover it up with the paper. Get them in there, but don't touch your dies for you new card makers. Look at, I even pick it up. I didn't even realize it. You'll see me run it through. So uh, then you're going to put the, ma the metal and then your top platform, run it through, and everything is fantastic. I just die cut another bunch of them. Oh, yes. It's, it, so I started getting not hot. So now I'm totally in my pajamas. <laughs> I took my house coat off. Yeah. Or else this is another day. This could be another day. And I just, I worked at night when I wasn't feeling well because during the day, um, yeah, 
I, I don't know, I felt worse during the day, but in the evenings when I couldn't sleep, I came upstairs and I just turned all the lights on and did some crafting. Because my craft room's on another floor, so it doesn't bother my husband if I'm up here crafting. So that's nice. And uh, so, yes. And probably you wouldn't even realize that was my pajamas, right? Um, well, you probably would because they look like pajamas to me. But anyway, I took some paper of this uh, creative paper um, and I went around it to make it uh, look like a frill. And I love the salmon color next to teal, next to that color. That's why I did that. And then I'm going to go around the edge of the actual coloring. I stapled each one of the folds so that they wouldn't move on me instead of using tape. Then I cut it off. Isn't that oh so pretty with those two colors? It's beautiful. Now, because I went cattywampus on the turn of the card base, I am only going to do one, like two sides of the actual creative um, paper. So on this, I will have the left side and the upper portion with the, it's paper ribbon actually, and you can do this with anything, but I wanted to cover the staples. So, uh, you know, it was smooth when I put it down and I did use hot glue. I'm pretty, no, I used double, the double sided roll, the scotch roll. But anyway, here we go. I'm trying to think, okay, now. It just bothered me that it had the white showing on the inside. I know that's crazy, but I had to go around and make another one and put it on the back. Don't ask me why I do this. I like the front to be just as clean as the back. It's just the way I roll and uh, I'm good with that. You don't have to do this, but you know, because I'm doing the cattywampus thing, it's going to show a bit on the upper portion and I think to the left. So I thought, well, just do the whole thing. I mean, why not, right? So I put the hot glue down, set it down there, cut it so it matched. Oh yeah, get those fingers out of there, Carol. That glue is called hot glue for a reason. <laughs> and I have so many silicone things to put on my fingers and put on my toes and, you know, my nose, whatever I want to do there to keep the hot glue. Do I use them? No. It's the same as uh, in the kitchen, you know, you have all these this paraphernalia stuff to keep you from your hands getting burnt, and then I just use my hands, or um, a dish cloth, you know, instead of grabbing a nice uh, colorful mitt, whatever, whatever works. Now I'm going around and adding some of the teal color in my Copics because it just didn't have enough for this uh, frill, this paper. Uh, weave. See that? Nice on the uh, back side and nice on the inside. Grab my roll of scotch tape and uh, yeah, this is actually, it's not cheap, this roll. So I try to use it sparingly and um, I'm going to double it up because of the uh, weaved paper there. I need to have it too high. Yes, so there you go. And then, believe it or not, I put hot glue in between those areas when I go to put it down. So I thought, okay, I have that on the bend going towards the left. So that means my frill is on the left side and the top of my image. I'm going to do the same on the inside one, but it is going to be to the right. So this one is the frill is to the left going up and across. Now this will be to the right going up and across. It gives it, uh, yeah, I thought of putting it, you know, I'm thinking of all different ways to create. That would look pretty right there. I did like that. And, um, but I was so wanting that cattywampus thing happening that I just couldn't go with straight. I did the same thing on here, even though it's on the inside and you don't see it, I just thought, Yep, Carol, just go with it. Just put it on the inside and the outside. That way you know it's nice and clean and crisp looking. It has, you know, when you look up through the top of it, it has that beautiful frill uh, look. It's nice and thick, me with thick. And then I just took the Tim Holtz little tiny attacher, 
don't use that often, so it was kind of nice to get that out of the stash. And uh, yeah, that put all of the nice little creases in there. Isn't that pretty? And uh, LDRS creative stamps and dies are, and papers, anything that they put out is beautiful. I love working with their products. And um, it doesn't mean that you have to use all the products because if you do a larger card, you need to add different pieces of your stash. And that's okay as long as LDRS Creative, you know, stands out and their images certainly do in their papers here. Now I grabbed some of my old ribbon here, stash ribbon that it matched, sort of. It, it was more to the orange than the salmon. And now I want to bring back buttons. I have 4,962,000 ,000 buttons and I need to use them. So I went to my stash and I thought, okay, we're using buttons because in the day, remember buttons, I couldn't get to thrift stores fast enough to get all the old buttons and put them in nice glass jars so they looked pretty. Well, for forget about looking pretty. You gotta use this stuff, Carol. That's what I'm thinking here. And I love buttons. So I found, look at them, they're glass buttons. Is that not beautiful? Well, they're probably not glass, but they look like glass. And then I ran some gray tape just to tie a knot. That's all I used. It's satin ribbon. I tied a knot and I put that up on that ribbon, but it was not, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't work for me. So let's get it all glued down so I can rip it off. Look at that button. Is that not gorgeous? Let's bring back our buttons, people. Oh, I love buttons. I don't know why I don't think of it. I have them you know, they're not just an ornament to decorate your craft room. I used to use buttons all the time. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to add buttons to my projects. Even my Christmas projects are going to have buttons on them if I can help it, if I can think of it. So here we go. I am putting on the front. I'm getting it ready. Yep, yeah, Caddy Wonkus bending down to the left. And I hope I zoom out for you. Look at that button. I just love that button. But I had to tear that ribbon off. I kept looking at it and looking at it and I just, yeah, there was something about it. And then look at this great big honking button here. That was beautiful. If I had to put that in the front, that would have been perfect, but it was too high and I didn't have enough gusset to lift up the page when it closed. See, when it closed there, you it would just hit that button and it wasn't going to work for me. So I had to rip that off. So here we go. I haven't glued anything down. This is the tree that comes with that beautiful uh, Build-A-Card set. And I'm going to use that set on the next, uh, that's the Garden Escape Build-A-Card. And here is the beautiful um, Copic colored, the same image, but Copic colored. Yes, let's go to the flower stash. Kept this in the creation of the Elderus Creative New Release card, the first card that I did, to show you that you can use buttons, you can use some of your stash to give your card some pizzazz, pizzazz. And uh, I was thinking of doing the flowers around one of the corners, but then I thought, you know what? I want to go cattywampus on the other side of the large piece underneath my focal image. And then I found this, you know, it's the same concept of the folded uh, ribbon, right? The pleated ribbon, I, I can say that. And so I had these rolls and I thought, you know what, I need to use up some of my stash. It matched perfectly. So as you can see, I went with the opposite. So on my focal image of the teals, it went from left to upper with the um, beautiful trim. And now I am going to go the opposite side. And this does wonders to the eye. You know, it's pleasing. It's very pleasing. There, here's where I knew this was coming off because it, it, that folded um, ribbon, pleated ribbon, did not match. It made this look orange. Oh yeah, I know it's a mess, but I'll cover it up. I love doing that. You know, I love covering stuff up. It doesn't bother me at all. 
I don't even cringe anymore when I have to rip something off. It just ends up, you know, working out because you have to just think it through. And there you go. You have one side of the pleated paper going in one direction and one side of the pleated ribbon on the opposite side. And that really does look pleasing to the eye. Now, I have at least four billion of this Stampin' Scrapping flowers I bought. They went on sale a few years ago and yeah, I bought them in every color. But I do suggest if sales come on, oh yes, here's some more. I went to my flower, I have a ch uh, chest that opens up, kind of like a hope chest thing full of flowers. And um, I wish I had have gotten all white because you can cope it color with your air gun and make them whatever color you want, you know. But when you buy colored flowers, you you have to match it pretty right on. And if I had to do it again, I would go with cream and white only. But that's just a sidebar. So here we go. Look at, oh yeah, I put some down. I had some polka dot roses there. I didn't like it. So I took it off. It didn't do anything for me in that sense. So <laughs> I took all those flower packages out and I put them all away. Yep, I'm tapping. Okay, if I don't put the flowers on there, what am I going to do? And I had to do something because it just looked too plain on the black cardstock, I thought. Yes, so I'm just moving my stuff around. And I had to get out some of that pleated paper and put it back on. So I just kind of eyeballed it and took my glue gun put it down, cut it to fit, you will never know that I tore that button off. Yeah, just taking some glue goobers off. And isn't that die cute? And the no line coloring, so easy peasy. Please give it a try. You will, just don't be intimidated by the fact it says no lines. You do have to have lines. You have to see your image. Just keep them to the pastels and to light colors, to your mid-tones and light, and you'll be really happy with um, the outcome of it. I really do believe you will. And what's nice about having the LDRS Creative Packaging, it's colored for you. You can copy it just as I did. This is pretty right on to the exact colors that were in on the page of the stamp, you know, on the packaging. So here we go. Look at, can you tell that I made a mess? No. And I got to put my buttons on there. And the gray was perfect. I love those Tim Holtz scissors, those little ones. I never grab them and they're perfect for cutting. I love them. So here we go. One on each corner, of course. We're going with the corners. and Isn't that pleasing? I really think it is. I don't know if it's like, um, you know, if you go to art school where they tell you that that's not what you shouldn't do. But I say, if your eye smiles when you do something, that's okay in my book. Yes. So um, I was smiling and I put them on each corner like that. I love the cat cut, the crooked. I'm going to call it what it is. It's crooked. The crooked paper. I like them going in the opposite directions as well as the ribbon. So yeah. So now let's get out the poils. Oh, you got to have pearls. Yes. I even went, you know how I buy my transitions, all the cutesy woozy little stuff, and I was going to buy some jungle animals and put them in between and really go crazy on this tutorial, but I'm going into Christmas cards now, so I didn't really want to purchase anything uh, animal-wise right now because we are, you know, my next project is going to be the Copic colored one, but I'm going to do Christmas cards. I want to get some quick Christmas cards up there for you some quick ideas for making a quick card. So that'll be nice. And then I am going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put the pearls on the opposite again. See how I ran that, um, the teal in one direction and the beautiful peach going down with the trim there. Now I'm going to do the opposite again. Then in my stash, I found these crystal flowers. They're little crystal flowers. They're beautiful. They just shine. And I put them over top. They looked identical to the flower that's in the stamp. So I put them down and I took my Copic marker and matched the teal. So that way I have that teal color running through 
the flowers, but oh, so slight, you know, just it gives the teal color reason to be there. It feels like it has a happy home, if you know what I mean. And there you go. You can see me coloring it over top. Then you bend that card in certain directions. And oh, yeah. yeah. So we have the pearls, and now I'm going to do the pearl swirls because inside there it has the match. It seems like it matches those little flowers. So, of course, I had to add this. And you know what? It brings some femininity to the card and it uses up the space that's empty. I like my cards to be filled in as much as possible and yet to have a classy look to them and elegance, you know. You don't want to overdo it and you don't want to underdo it either. If I was to sway one way or the other, I would go with overdoing it. <laughs> totally opposite to what you thought I was going to say underdo it. Oh no, 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 you know. It, uh, it's like jewelry. Overdo it. Just put it all on, you know. If you don't go out very much and you love your jewelry, stack it all on and wear it, you know. <laughs> Who's going to say anything? You feel good. It's great. Yeah, so there you go. So I'm finding stuff. This is so funny. I go into my uh, stash and I found those postcards. So, oh, I'm having a cup of tea. And I'm actually, yeah, clothing in my right mind now on this section. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. Where's my jammies? Yeah, um, they're gone. Yes, I've never done that before. I've never crafted at night like that. I might have edited at night, but <laughs> yeah, I've never done a tour like, you know, with my video running. So anyhow, and I want to thank everybody, all my wonderful new subscribers, my subscribers that have been family and been along with me. Thank you. Love your comments. When I was not well and having to have bed rest there, I loved reading and answering my comments. It just makes my day. So thank you very much. And um, here I'm just going with whatever I feel looks good. Have a, have a little sip of your Tetley tea. I love Tetley tea. I'm Canadian. All Canadians like Tetley or Red Rose, but I prefer Tetley. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we go. Look at that. Just a little bit of pearls here. And I kept the diamonds off, so that's nice. And I, you know, it doesn't look overdone to me. It really doesn't. And look at you have animals on there. Who'd have thunk, right? That you would just jewel it up with having an owl and a fox and a little mouse and a rabbit and an elephant. So pretty, and it's so soft, and pearls soften anything up, you know? I really think it does. I think it's gorgeous. And so then I'll put all that stash away, and we'll work on the inside of the card quickly. And then I want to thank everybody over on LDRS Creative, such wonderful, talented design team members there. Angie Hunt is an amazing, amazing woman. I appreciate her very much and for allowing me the privilege of designing with her wonderful products. Thank you, Angie. It certainly is a privilege. Every time I sit down to use your products, I'm truly thankful. So thanks very much. So I'm pretty satisfied now with the outside of this beautiful hanging in there stamp set, and I'm going to move to the inside. So I looked on the uh, front of the card so that I could turn this to the opposite direction, just like that. I had to put hot glue on here because it is pretty thick and I don't want this bending at all, like no warps in it. So I chose to go down low on this than to do it in the middle because it is, you know, crooked. So I wanted to have kind of like the rule of thirds on there. And isn't that button so cute, but it had to I ended up gluing it in there and taking it out because it was so funny when I closed the lid of the card. Uh, it was just, look at how thick, like this is really a thick button. Beautiful, beautiful, but thick. So here we go to the Build a, Guard, Gar Build a Card Garden Escape set. Oh, I can't wait to start the second card to finish it up. I have it all sitting here. But I have a few techniques I think you're really going to like in the next card. So I'll get that created today for you. Hopefully I'll get it up tomorrow. 
And uh, yeah, look at this tree. So I put this tree down with glue. I went to use the glue and the lid popped off. You know the part that it comes out the narrow end and it went boink. So I ended up getting a paintbrush and sticking the, you know, the top side in. And yeah, I tried this this one here, but it I couldn't get the glue out. I don't know. I just didn't have the strength, I guess. But I wanted to put down a few of the leaves on here, but I did want to leave some up so it didn't look like it was all, you know, flat. And then I added another one to give it some dimension, of course, and then ghosted a bit so that it looks like it's got a lot of foliage, a foliage on the tree. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. And then our Love You Bunches tag is going to rest on there. Look at this bird bath. Oh, you can see my, <laughs> my paintbrush up there is slowly going way down into my Nouveau glue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a mess. Uh, a nice mess, though. You have to get the glue out somehow, so whatever works, right? I don't care as long as it works. If I, you know, that's why they make baby wipes and paper towels. Just clean yourself up. Then I put the hummingbirds uh, down there. I think one's a hummingbird and one is just a little birdie. I put two of them on there. And then look at that. Slap that glue on there, Carol. What's really funny here is I put another tag on the back, a nice black one to look nice. And look what I did. I slapped glue all over it and put it down. <laughs> yeah, Caddy Wonkus, turn that thing crooked. Oh, yeah. Go in the opposite direction. Yes. Yay, there's my gold. You know how I like to put gold, a little bit of gold in every card. It doesn't matter. I fit it in there. Now I'm going to pull that honking button off. Come on, twist it. There it is. And it didn't even make that much of a mess, actually. I went to my stash and I grabbed some more buttons and I found a flat one, but not before I end up putting the same color on the opposite side. Look at that. Doesn't it just look pleasing to you? Please tell me it does. I just love the pleated ribbon and the pleated paper. The colors, the background with the birds and the bird feeder and the tree. And of course, let's get some blingy blingy on there. Gotta get the pearls on the inside too. Love this stuff. I think it's so pretty. I don't know, I like it. And if I like it, if I'm happy with it, I don't mind giving it away because I'm pleased with it, yes. And uh, there you have it. I think I double up the birds too, give them a little bit of bulk. I put one on top of the other. And then I was gonna look for my little silver pen to put a little eyeball on, but I didn't do it on uh, the video. Sorry about that. Here I'm filling the hole in and putting a flat button down. Same gray, but isn't that pretty? Now my card will close nicely because I have the three, the gusset in there, the quarter of an inch. Take little pieces of the glue out with my pokey tool. And then something wasn't right. I kept looking at it thinking something just isn't adding up here. And you'll see what it is in just a second. I find that if you look at things from two angles, one when you're sitting down and then stand up and look over top of your project. It puts things into perspective when you do that for some reason. It does for me. And if I feel like there's some type of element missing, um, I just stand up and look at it like I am now. I slowed it down and I knew something was missing. And I saw right up there in the middle of the black inside a bit of glue got on there. And I do believe that was on purpose because that's where it was missing. I needed to add something on top of that little blue mess. And that's where, you know, it just needed something. I'm showing you those buttons and the no-line coloring. It's so crazy cute. LDRS creative stamps and dies and papers and accessories are beautiful. You need to check out the shop. Just gorgeous simply gorgeous so i'm going to go back and i am going to yeah what am i doing here did i find something <laughs> oh look at i'm letting you see me clean out the glue isn't that awesome but anyway i went over and to my stash i got this back out and that's what i needed right here it covered up the little mess it 
put something in that naked space I had there and you can see I'm standing up and creating so yeah it just I don't know it made it I was happy right here I didn't want anything else added to it I thought it was beauteous so yes I guess I did want something here's the little gut pieces to that um, to that tag it's the same flower as in the tag itself you know the outer uh, one in the set so when I die cut that silver panel I saved these gut pieces and look what I did I took a um, just a pen a glue pen and I added them back because both sets work the outer window set where these little pieces parts came from match the tag perfectly they're a match they're a set and then I thought look over there added some bling bling to that beautiful bird uh, bath the bird water bath <laughs> the bird bath so anyway my friends I'm gonna fill that in thank you to Eldaris creative uh, please check this new release out. It's beautiful. I'm going to see you on the next tutorial. Have yourself a blessed week. I hope you enjoyed the no line coloring today and that you will give it a try. I know you're going to really like it. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks for taking an hour out of your day to sit down and view my tutorials. It means a lot. Take care everybody.